I'll be introducing our next speaker, Fikayo Akiridulu. Um, Fikayo is currently studying a Doctor of Philosophy in Politics and International Relations at the University of Oxford. So um, our research focuses on the politics and economics of China to Africa um, relations. She is a financial products and technology growth expert with experience in the Middle East, um, Europe, China, and Africa. In addition, she has experience working at Bloomberg, Steers, and Refinitiv, now known as um, the London Stock Exchange Group. So um, she's the founder of the She's the founder and community manager of the Group Network, a community of intelligent and like-minded um, people who want to understand how to survive and grow in the Nigerian business landscape. She is also a Schwarzman scholar, I hope I pronounced that right, and a research analyst at the African Climate Foundation. When she's not working, um, she enjoys running, playing, um, playing tennis, reading about business successes, and failures and working on advancing the prospects of black women within the workplace. Oh, that's really amazing. So um, thank you so much, Fikayo, for joining us. Um, you have the floor. I didn't realize everybody else was going to send such, such a short um, uh, bio. <laughs> send a shorter version of my bio. Um, the thing is, Shell, Shell, can I be the one to control this? Because I have notes in the, I have notes in the um, presentation that I was hoping to sort of read out. Can you give me host access, maybe? Because yeah, otherwise, sure. I, I don't have my notes, and then no, I. No, that's, 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 that's fine. That's fine. I'll make you also. Uh, uh Victor, that might be. Can everyone else hear me? I think Victor, that might be a you problem, darling. We can. Yeah. Hear you. Yeah, Victor, darling, check your check your mic or your speakers. Which one is it? You need to check to hear me. All right, cool. Um, now I feel bad about the state of my presentation because Matrayo's presentation felt very positive, and mine is actually quite uh pessimistic. Bad <laughs> cop, good cop. <laughs> um, all right, I'll jump in. I'm hoping you guys can see my screen. I'm sharing my screen. Uh, can someone yes, just yes, I can. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm yeah. very honest. Uh, my presentation is a bit more uh, don't do this. <laughs> um, so um, I'll jump in. Um, so A to Z, I'm struggling, I'm also struggling to hear Fikayo. Okay, this might be a Fikayo thing. Um, turn off Wi-Fi, let's see what happens there. Any improvement for anyone just to make sure? Hmm. I can hear you clearly though. Oh, okay, uh, cool. on the... okay. I'll just keep going, I'll speak through. Okay. All right. So, it's good now. Okay, great. A to Z of PhD application. Um, so I'll take it from the top. <laughs> the A is ask yourself why, like for real. Why would you favor? I recommend turning off your camera because I can literally see you playing a video game. And that's just so interesting for all of us involved. Thank you. Uh, all right, so the A is ask yourself why. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is, the truth is you probably should not do a PhD. A PhD is not for everyone. And I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm not trying to discourage anyone or you know prevent anyone from succeeding. It's just a PhD is the equivalent of, I don't know if you guys have seen that video of the guy saying, help me, they carry me where I don't know. That is literally what a PhD is. It's you and, you and your supervisor carrying yourselves where you don't know. Um, <laughs> So that's the first, that's the first part of the A. It's ask yourself why. Um, don't do a PhD, for example, if it's more like a means to jackpine, because the wahala is not worth it. A PhD is a ton of thankless work. It's hours upon hours of writing essays. Think of your undergraduate degree. Think of all the essays you had to write, think right. of your final year project in undergrad. Did you enjoy that process? If you did not 100% enjoy writing your undergraduate um, presentation, um, I think I've stopped sharing screen. Yeah, yes, just, just one moment. Sorry. I can only see your talk. Yeah, go, on, go on. All right, let me try again. All right, can you guys see my screen now? 
Is this working? Yes, mm, yes I can. I'll this again. Just go over here. All right, great. So I'm showing my screen. So the first A, the A is literally ask yourself why, like a very serious why. Um, do not do a PhD because you want to jackpot. It is a very painful process. I will show you everything I went through to get to where I am now. Um, so you kind of understand that, you know, this is not just bad belly. Like I genuinely, I've spoken to a lot of, some of the Oxford people on this call about them wanting to do a PhD. And I was like, guy, you don't want to do this. Um, so I'll give you an example. This is my backstory, right? I genuinely like school. Like at under, when I was in my undergraduate degree, I was emailing the university every day that they should keep the library open 24 seven because I just wanted to stay there, right? Um, I am obsessed with China Africa stuff. That is the topic of my PhD. I like reading complex and unnecessarily long articles. Like I'm that person that I can literally just sit down and be reading the most random article. I don't know if you guys can see my screen, but this is an article I'm literally reading right now. And all this article is doing, if you can see it, is trying to explain in the most complex way why social media is important, right? So it's not for everybody. Um, I strongly recommend asking yourself why. If you did not, if you don't thoroughly enjoy school, if you don't appreciate uncertainty, if you don't appreciate there are mornings when I wake up and I my supervisor will ask me, okay, write 3,000 words on so, 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 so topic. And you have to immediately start writing because you have to submit in the evening, right? So ask yourself why. I have two master's degrees. Uh, I went to China. I studied as a Strassman scholar. Again, that's how obsessed I am with China, Africa stuff. I came back and did a master's at Oxford again. Um, and I'm studying for CFA while at the same time um, working as a researcher at the Africa Climate Foundation, right? So I got to be honest, uh, it's not for everybody. It is a very painful, it's a very painful and long process. Uh, more importantly, it is such a time consuming application. But if all of these things don't scare you and you still think, yeah, this could be something I like the idea of being called doctor, consider the following. Do you like uncertainty, right? You don't know what you're researching. Your supervisor doesn't know what you're researching. You're just showing up every day on vibes and hoping somebody figures it out for you. <laughs> Um, do you enjoy long hours of reading and writing just because of it, right? Like I'm that person that I'll sit down and I'll read anything just because I want to say I read anything, right? So ask yourself if that's not something, if you can't write, if, think of it this way, if right now, think of a topic you are genuinely interested in. If you cannot sit down right now and write a thousand words on that topic, probably shouldn't do a PhD, to be honest. <laughs> I, again, I, I feel really bad. Uh, I didn't know we we're all being optimistic here. Motraya set me up. Um, but yeah, do you find value in just one one? Like there are days when you just have to sit down and think about the most random topic, the most random thing. Do you enjoy that? If you don't, PhD is not for you. If you do, okay, we can start to have a conversation. So that's the A, ask yourself why. And let your why be a very serious why. Like do not let it be jackpot. I'm not even being funny. Um, there was a guy, um, uh, there was a guy at LSC last year who actually got in to the PhD and halfway through, I think he kind of realized it wasn't for him and the university kicked him out. Um, and obviously that's not great. So that's two years of his life he could have used for something else. So really ask yourself, like, do I like school? Uh, if the answer is not a resounding yes, this don't do it. <laughs> but the B, the fun part. But if you can see, I really tried to make this an A-B thing. It didn't quite work, but I stick with it. Uh, the B is, if this is what you want, you have to be committed and ruthless in your application process. Like, and I, I mean ruthless. Like, you need to approach this almost like a project. Think of you're trying to, okay, I was going to say found Twitter, but with what Elon Musk is doing, that's a bit of a joke. But think of you are starting, trying to start a company. Think of how you would be method, a methodical, you would say, okay, register company name, hire people, do this. That sort of methodical approach is what you need to take if you're going to apply for a PhD. So the first thing is your proposal. This is the most important part. And I'll be very honest with you. If you are planning to apply to get in next September. So if you're trying to apply this application cycle and you have not started your proposal now and you want to come to Oxford, just wait till next year. <laughs> like, that's not like, I'm not trying to be funny. Just wait till next year. It took me three and a half months to get the final version of my proposal. I had almost 10 different versions that I was writing and changing every day. You write, you get feedback, you update. You write, you get feedback. So I'll be very honest, unless maybe you've written something before from your masters or you've written something before that is amazing and everybody told you it was great in your school, just wait till next year because 
the process of even writing a strong proposal you know it's it's wild and think of the fact that you're competing against i remember when i was applying we were i was competing against people who had worked at the un there was a girl who applied and she's my classmate now she worked at the un worked at world trade organization and then worked at goldman sachs these are the kind of people you're competing with when you apply to a phd at oxford so it's really that thing where you have to really ask yourself like Sorry, Fermi, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to be realistic here because <laughs> this could go south really quickly. And it's not cheap. It's not a cheap process, right? Like each application, for example, if you want to apply for a PhD to Cambridge, at least last year, it was 75 pounds, right? 75 pounds multiplied by 1,000, that's 7,005. <laughs> I mean, I can go to Mega Chicken and eat well <laughs> with that money, right? So it's not just the time, it's the money as well. It's not cheap. And if you're applying to Cambridge, you're probably applying to LSE. That's 275 pounds. Oh, that's 14k mate um, so your proposal is probably the most important thing the two things i would recommend when it comes to proposal is depending on the university you want to apply to, let's say you want to apply to oxford i recommend okay let's say you want to apply to oxford for example what i recommend you do so for example i'm studying for a phd in oxford studying politics what I recommend you do is go to the Oxford University Politics website. Oh God, what is happening? Uh, I don't. Am I being hacked? This would be such an awkward time to be hacked, you know. All right, sorry guys, I honestly don't know what's happening. Um, all right, cool, so I'll just share my screen again. All right, uh, I hope you guys can still see my screen. But yeah, look at the Oxford, so let's say you want to apply to Oxford for a PhD in politics. Go to the Oxford University website um, and look at the professors that are teaching at Oxford. Look at what they're teaching and see how you can match what you want to talk about in your PhD to what they're teaching. Because the truth is, if what you want to write about, there's no professor at the university that is researching that topic, they will not accept you, no matter how great your application is. So for example, when I was applying, I literally went to the university's website. I went to the website of like all the professors. I looked at all of them and who was doing something I was interested in. And I just say writing down, okay, this person wants to do this. This person wants to do that. And then based off of what I knew they wanted to do, I then started to write my proposal and reach out to them. The second part I re recommend of your proposal is make sure you reach out to the professors. Do not just apply. I mean, some universities will say you don't have to reach out to the professors first, but I strongly recommend you reach out because the truth is if that professor doesn't send you they will not fight for you to get funding. They will not fight for you to get anything. They will literally just leave you. Like my current supervisor, it was almost as if I was toasting him. <laughs> I think Sage can attest to it. I've told him this story. It was almost like I was toasting him when I was applying. I used to go to all these events. I'll sit down in front. I'll be asking questions. So by the time I sent him my application, he knew my name. He knew where to find me. He knew what I was looking for. And we were aligned. So the first thing is your proposal. I honestly, if you're applying to Oxford, for this cycle the application is going to close in about two months if you've not started your proposal that's a massive red flag i recommend you either start quickly or you wait for the next cycle and also when you reach out to the professor don't just say i want to talk to you be very specific so for example when i emailed my supervisor i said hi ricardo i have read your your paper blah 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 i think your paper is absolutely interesting it aligns with what i want to do in my phd can we talk more so really you know because these people are busy they will ignore your email even me, like in my first year of PhD, if you send me an email that says, hi, Pikayo, I'm interested in doing a PhD, can we talk? I will ignore your message. <laughs> Whereas if you send me an email that says something like, hi, Pikayo, I'm looking at research in China, Africa. I'm also interested in one, two, three, four, five things. Can we talk? Then I will answer you, right? So a PhD is, uh, there are no words for it, basically. Um. You guys see my full screen. There's a bunch of people asking for. Yeah. Um, so references. This is, I think, I think that were touched on this in the first instance. Your references are so painfully important. Like you cannot just 
ego and vibes. You need people that know you well and trust you and like can say you're the best thing since ice cream. Basically, you cannot just have any odd person. I strongly recommend um, reach out to your professors that taught you during masters. The ones that the ones that um, you know you really impress them, you made them happy. Tell them to write a reference, and they can't just write, "Oh, you know, Motara is a great girl." No, they need to write, "Motara is the best student in the world." Like the the, the reference needs to be strong. Um, really pay attention to that. Don't just have anybody write your reference. Uh, essays. Your statement of purpose. Nigerians do this thing where we write by the grace of God and stuff. Do not do that. Um, a lot of professors in these spaces are atheists. Do not irritate people. Um, no offense. I'm not saying hide your religion or anything, but please let your let your um, let your essay really stand out. Like I've read a few essays for people who are applying this year already. And some of the essays are insane. Like, I mean, if we have a bit of time after this, I'll show you guys some of my essays. I will not send it to you, but I'm happy to sort of share my screen and show you guys my essay so you can actually see um, some of what I wrote. But the quality of your essay, the first sentence of your essay needs to, you know, really, oh, like I read an essay by this girl who wrote in 2000, and, I think she wrote in 2014 when the Arab Spring started. I was shocked. And it's like, oh, she was shocked. That's the kind of start you want. It's like really slinted because these guys are reading at least a hundred essays. If your essay is boring, you're done immediately. You're done. Like they will not, that's it. So really come at it with a story. Really like, I don't know how to explain it, but think of where you were during NSARS, for example. If you were out there on the streets protesting, like, like you were out there on the streets during NSARS, if you were out there on the streets during NSARS protesting, you know, you, you were one of the people that cooked for people during NSARS or something like that, write that. That is your story. If you built an NGO, if you, I don't know, if you've done something that is powerful, write it. Even if you haven't done something that is powerful, talk about the fact that living in Nigeria every day is a risk. <laughs> like, make it sell. Because um, again, if I'm reading 100 essays, I'm not going to read an essay that starts with by the grace of God. No offense. Um, also, why the university? Um, if you're going to apply to Oxford, you can't just say, I want to study at the top university in the world. You know, you need to say, Oxford's professor, blah, 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 is amazing. I want to study with him. Um, I read about Oxford's commitment to diversity, blah, blah, blah. I'm interested. You know, really pay attention to what the university is doing. Uh, I think Matara mentioned something about roads. You can mention, I was interested in how the Oxford University administration handled the roads issue. You know, really come at it with 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 a vengeance, basically. Um, your CV, <laughs> your CV doesn't need your date of birth, your marital status, or your picture. Don't do that. Uh, if you go online, I recommend for those of you who genuinely want to apply for a PhD, go online and search for McKenzie or BCG um, CV. Follow that template. McKenzie or BCG have the two best templates online. Um, I strongly recommend that you check those and mimic that if you're applying or when you're applying. This is for masters as well. Um, if you're applying to any UK university, follow those templates because if you send a five page CV, nobody's reading it. Uh, I can tell you that for a fact. Um, finding funding, uh, I'll be very honest, finding funding in the UK is a game of your um, But in America, everybody, you know, funding is guaranteed for PhD. In the UK, you have to be begging them. If you know how many emails I sent people saying, please, I'm poor, help me. <laughs> um, I'm very honest. I cannot provide much help, much strategic help on funding. I recommend it. Um, I think Sage will tell you me. I don't <laughs> um, GRE, if you're applying to the, to the US, you definitely need this. This GRE is the reason I'm studying in the UK because not nobody could pay me to write GRE. That's just the truth. They could not pay me. They still cannot pay me um, to write GRE. So yeah, reaching out to people. I think I mentioned this. Um, really, you know, be strategic about it. Don't just write, I want to talk to you. Tell us why. This is where the money is. I'll be very quick. CEO the process. So I don't know if you guys can see my screen properly, but this is a screenshot of my admissions tracker. So what I did when I was starting to apply, again, I always knew a PhD was what I wanted. I was heading here a long time. So I sat down and I said to myself, what schools do I want to apply for? What program do I want to apply for? And what I did, if you guys can see my entire screen, is I created this folder. If you guys can see on Google Drive, I created a folder that had everything, every presentation, every research outline, 
you can see all the different drafts of my proposal. You can see CAS PhD proposal, final version, do not edit. This was the final one I submitted. When I was applying to Cambridge, it was my Cambridge Trust Scholarship letter. Literally approach this thing with, with like, think of the way Jeff Bezos started Amazon. That is how you need to approach it. Be very, very strategic. Um, so you can see my admissions tracker. Um, you can see my results. I made six applications <laughs> and got five rejections. <laughs> and you can see my one yes. And you can see my references, I named them. I put notes. So for example, Cambridge, application to Cambridge was a gamble. Um, I knew they would not accept me, but I had to try because, you know, what's life if you don't try? And, you know, really approach it like, like a project. Like come at it with a vengeance. Like I, I gotta be honest getting into a PhD is a job in itself it's like you you need to think of it as you are finding work like it's a job in itself right so you can sort of see my entire map you can see the folder my sample of written work all my Cambridge essays that I submitted um if you apply for a PhD you need to submit a sample work all the sample works that I submitted literally everything all my folders I had applied in 2019 and gotten rejected from everything you can see that folder like approach this thing like a job it's not a joke I like google sheets because it's easy for me if you use notion if you use Trello, whatever you use it's up to you but really come at it strategically because a PhD application is a job it's a job um and then last last slide zigzag is the way the z <laughs> the truth is a lot of it is luck. I gotta be honest. Um, I was lucky that I was, I, I reached out to somebody at Oxford who wanted to do what I wanted to do. And so it was like, okay, we kind of gelled. Uh, there's a bit of luck. I gotta be honest. If you're applying in a year where everybody's hot, hot, you know, there's nothing you can do. You're you, they're them, you know, so please do account for luck in this. Um, I'm not trying to make myself seem like some kind of hype person because I did get five rejections and those rejections were very painful. Um, be ready for rejection. Um, on average, the acceptance rate to Oxford for PhD in politics is 0.06%. <laughs> so if 100 people apply, they take about 15, 15 basically. basically. Right. So I, 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 rejection is plenty. You could be the best thing since ice cream and still be rejected. You know, I don't take it for granted that I'm very lucky to be here. Yeah. Um, find joy in it. Again, like I said earlier, if you don't like school, if you don't like things like this to be doing project management, don't be a PhD. Um, lastly, have a backup plan. Um, I knew I wanted to do a PhD. It was my first choice. It was a thing I wanted more than anything in this life. But I also saw in my life that if I didn't get to a PhD, I'll go back to stairs. I'll beg Preston to take me back and I'll continue my work at stairs. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions at the end. Um, or if you type it out, I'm happy to sort of answer the questions that you type out. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I hope I've put you off doing a PhD. And if I haven't, I, I hope I've inspired you to really come at it with a vengeance. So yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. Hi, if um, Simi, I can hear you. Um, thank you so much, Fikaya. Uh, Fikaya has a reputation for being very frank. So, um, but I know she dropped so many gems, and um, I find them very useful. You should absolutely. She mentioned that um, the McKinsey and BCG uh, templates are two of like the best templates out there for CV, and they they're useful for for um masters as well so um definitely check them out um simi can can are you here can you i can hear you yeah I okay am. go on yeah thank you Cheryl. so um i was actually going to give room for fikaya to answer yes. one question before we go on a break so um in the chat fikaya Meso is is asking you know did having a master's at oxford actually help you with your phd direction yeah, I mean, first of all, Oxford do not accept you to a PhD if you don't already have masters. Um, Oxford, like Oxford does not, it's in, so it's in America. If you apply to America, you can apply straight from bachelors. Um, but if you apply to the UK, there's no UK university that will accept you for PhD 
without a master. So you definitely need a master's. I don't necessarily think my master's helped me, uh, but I needed it. So, you know, I wasn't, having a master's didn't make me different from anybody else. Other people, there was a girl who had a master's from Harvard. So <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's a helpful, helpful answer. If you don't want to do a master's, you have to go straight into a PhD from bachelor's. I recommend applying to the US. Uh, I did want to add though, that very, 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 very rare occasion, like Pekaya said, but I did see someone um, get into a PhD in Cambridge without a master's. It's amazing. Like she, she stunned me. She's a good Cambridge scholar, <laughs> but you. yeah, she did do it. But it's extreme. In fact, it's like it will never happen. Just don't put it. <laughs> don't just don't. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, kudos to Cambridge. Me, I know for a fact that this episode we're in. These are the no, they wouldn't. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry to add. I'm coming from Cambridge itself. Um, yeah, that's a good example from Mutunare, but. Honestly speaking, even with the master's program, because, you know, I'm in the MCL class, for example, you can imagine the level of intensity it is when you're in a class of just 25 and everybody's like the smartest guy from wherever they're coming from. So like, um, like Fikaya said, like it's even the master. So I'm, I can, I, I'm scared of the PhD already right from the master's level. But like she said, if you're not like ready to put in the work and be committed, like studying, impossible 24 hours in every day and not getting any rest i don't think it's it's the right path like it's 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 a daunting process honestly and thank you fikaya for the for the for the ruthless honesty <laughs> thank you so much uh, just to follow up um that's um fikaya the person was actually saying um did your master's at Oxford actually help you with connecting with your professors when it was time to apply for your PhD? Oh, I see what you mean. Um, I mean, I knew the professor before I came to Oxford. Like I've known him since I was at Bloomberg. I mean, it helped that I was at, okay, I see what you mean. It definitely helped that I was already at Oxford because it showed that I was serious about school. Do you get what I mean? But I knew that I had known before. She was so serious about school. Hope we are muted. Are we muted? You're not muted. Now you're muted. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like my sound has been off. I don't know what's happening there. So. Oh okay. Um. Yeah. Let me just quickly address that. Oh, so yeah, um, Madhika, do you want to ask a question? I can see. Me to unmute. Um, Kobloe Ufe, I hope I'm still on. Can you mute your mic? Thank you. Madhika, are you there? Hmm. It seems um probably it's a mistake. So yeah. Thank you so much, Fikayo, for your um, answers. I'm sure they were very um, um, helpful to the person asking. So now we're just going to go on a break for about a minute. And then when we um, resume, we will be having um, Destiny Ogedigbe speaking. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> 